bald face horn nest, uh, roughly 15 feet over a country road. I'm gonna try to get it down. Wish me luck. Well, that's where it was. Here it is. Like a bird got into it. Probably not worth keeping. Bad shape. But they're always fun to try to get down. So it's got uh, five combs, very productive. Uh, produced a lot of queens, workers and males only at the top comb. like a moth in there. Let's see it on the camera. Pretty interesting. So I guess that could be a uh, moth from the uh, webworm, fall webworm. Um, this bottom comb probably produced all males. I know it's a dolico vestibule. The, the last comb will often, uh, with that bald face horn, so it just produce a bunch of males in the, the very bottom, which is kind of interesting. But, um, yeah, and they always like eat into um, the bottom, the cells. They chew down to the base of the cells for some reason. But, yeah, um, interesting. All right. So, got it down. Not worth saving. Um, yeah, there's some uh, webbing in there. So, probably got attacked after it was abandoned by the uh, the wax moth, lesser or greater wax moth, or combination of both. So yeah. Probably made about 500 new queens, similar number of males. That's how the combs are supported with um, very thick um, buttresses. So, yeah, thanks for watching. It's the envelope. I'm not sure what this white, what those white things are. If they're eggs of something, but um, there's a dead uh, remains of a dead male right here. So it's the nest. Here's another interesting find. Actually, probably within 30 feet of the bald faced hornet. I just got it's a. Uh, Looks real smooth, looks like an aerial yellow jacket nest. So this would be the second mature aerial yellow jacket nest I've found in uh, 2020. It's probably about 18 feet up, but I found a long, a very long branch, a long thin branch that I can reach it. It's probably, the branch is probably about 15 feet long, so I can just pretty much uh, stand up and get it down from there and maybe we'll have a look, but pretty cool. It's always fun to find these uh, Dolico Vespular and area nest. Um, be interesting to see how the uh, combs are, if um, they're intact or if they got attacked by the uh, webworm, because I've seen other nests of this species that uh, got completely destroyed, the combs, because the moths, uh, the worms, the larval stage of the moths actually eat the combs. They probably eat the waist of the, uh, the wasp, but in the process they web over the uh, the combs and just destroy them completely so all that's left is the uh, the outer covering the shell which we see here but hopefully the combs are intact but uh, we'll get this puppy down and zoom in a little bit quality goes down I got to get a better uh, get a better phone but it you know it does the job the nest is probably about 12 or 13 inches tall by about nine inches wide I'm guessing a better idea once I get it down but it's at least a foot tall 
It's probably a little bit bigger than the one I got off the uh, the side of that cabin back in August. All right. Just a view uh, from another angle. All right, well, I got it down. That's where it was. You can see a little bit of envelope up there on the top of it, but this is the nest. It's probably about a foot tall, but it's uh, definitely the aerial yellow jacket based on the texture of the outside paper. I'm kind of hesitant to open it up just because they're so rare, but even with this species, the um, it's a little bit stronger at the top, definitely. A little bit thicker than uh, the bottom, has a little bit more flexibility here. Um, it's where like the queen initiated the nest. The top, a little focus. Wait a second, I'll try this. So yeah, this is the top. It's like I said, it's a little bit stronger. They incorporated some leaves into it. Dolico vespulae arin area, common uh, aerial nesting yellow jacket. Although I don't know how common it is anymore. It's just uh, maybe they are pretty common. It's just they're like I'm out in the country right now, so I guess they could be uh, pretty common in certain areas. There could be other nests around that I didn't see. I only found this nest because um, I saw that bald-faced hornet nest hanging over the road and uh, in the process of looking for um, a branch to knock it down I came across uh, this um, aerial yellow jacket nest probably about 20 feet off the road up in the tree. So yeah, this one, um, I'm going to take this one, keep this. Somewhere at the bottom of this area yellow jacket nest, but uh, you can't see the combs. Um, so it's probably just uh, weather damage. nest uh, probably about 10 feet up um, very accessible don't think there's anything in it some dumpsters here at the park I'll try to get it down and have a look right. that's where it was got it down and now the mystery of the where at the bottom is may be confirmed because as you can see with this nest some water damage so the water drips down probably down the side of the nest and then it just uh, pools at the bottom and then uh, eventually the envelope the outer paper just kind of deteriorates but yeah I was able to just kind of break the branch twist it campsite near me so people dump their trash there so I got people behind me but no big deal. Bald face horn nest is on the left. Aerial yellow jacket nest on the right. You can kind of see the difference in the, uh, the way they build the uh, outside envelope but one thing I noticed you would think the opposite but it seems like these bald faced hornet nests like the the, the, um, the birds and the weather um, they don't seem to withstand, um, once they're abandoned, they don't seem to hold up as long. And this nest would have probably been abandoned probably in the beginning of November, whereas this one could have been probably early September it was abandoned. Um, but it seems like aerial yellow jacket nests actually hold up better, the nest structure, than the um, maculata nests do. As you can see, like, at the top it's uh, kind of worn out, um, water damage at the bottom. But this one doesn't really have any um, water at the bottom. And they were both hanging in trees, um, exposed, the trees that, you know, didn't have any leaves, so they would have been exposed to the weather. The elements just as, you know, both just as equally, but, 
Yeah. So very cool. They're both um, roughly the same size. And this one actually could have had more individuals because, like I said in other videos, they have um, the combs can actually, they have multiple um, worker rearing combs, two to three worker combs. And then they, <clears throat> they build the um, queen cells on the periphery of the top combs where they have, as the other nest, it was like the other aerial yellow dragon nest they have on the side of the third comb, there's queen cells. And then on the fourth comb, there's queen cells. Um, but, you know, it could be somewhere with this one, too. But they can have much more workers in um, the aerial yellow jacket versus the bald face one that just has workers um, on the top comb and then uh, males and queens on the, the successive combs. So, pretty interesting. You can also tell um, which species built which nest. Not only this is kind of more smooth, like the strips are kind of a different texture, but they're also smaller, like the, the light stripes, you can see they're kind of thinner, whereas these are wider, so, because they have, bald face horns have larger jaws, so, the, uh, each pop of paper is um, going to be fatter, um, so that's one way you can tell, without looking at the comb, without looking at the comb structure, that's how you can tell, but yeah, they're, um, and this, these, these aren't small nests, I mean, this nest is probably about at least 12 inches, probably 13 inches tall, and this one's probably 14, another, only about another inch taller, actually. Yeah, but here's the uh, maculata nest opened up. It's got uh, five combs. Looks like the bottom comb maybe didn't rear anything. A lot of queens were reared in this nest, as you can see, very tall uh, pupil caps. Um, see some of the hornets in here. Yellow jackets. But yeah, it's very wet in here, waterlogged. Smaller cells at the top. All the other combs are large cells. So, just to illustrate my point. Probably a, I don't know, 200 worker nest. That's what I always say, but roughly around maybe 200. Probably produced about 400 queens, 300 queens maybe. 250 at, the, at least. Very symmetrical. It's a dead uh, wasp there on the fifth comb, very bottom comb. That one I will not be opening. It's a keeper. But uh, these are a little bit more, much more common bald faced hornet nest, at least in my area. So, all right. Thanks for watching. November the 14th, 2020. Stay safe. Now, the combs actually do look like they are intact, at least on the bottom. It's the aerial yellow jacket nest. Pretty well intact. Take a guess, it's probably 12 to 13 inches tall. So while I was in here, I wanted to show you guys all the, the nest I have currently. This nest here is two combs. It's actually featured. Um, this is the only nest I have from 2019. All the other nests are from 2020. But 
Um, this is a Vespula Vidua nest. It had two combs featured in the angry ground hornets removed uh, from August of 2019. And the species is similar to the bald face hornet. They have work this is actually the top comb you can see here. It's mostly small cells except for on the per um, periphery. So this would they would have reared queens here on the end. And then this is um, the um, reproductive comb, the second comb. Uh, that was mostly uh, queens and males, that had all queens and males wouldn't have, sh uh, should not have had uh, workers reared, but this comb would have been mostly workers, some males, and queens on the perimeter, uh, periphery. This is the Oreo yellow jacket nest from the cabin I got, and this is the other one. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger. It does have sort of a top knot on it, which is cool, and the, the combs, like I said, are in good, seem like they're in good shape. And then um, the three uh, bald face hornet nests I got um, last week, and this of course uh, being the largest. Top knot there, I love those things. But um, this nest is probably a good 20 inches tall, actually. My hand for comparison, but it's way up there. So yeah, this is uh, all my nest currently. Mostly Dolico Vespula, except for the Vidua. Alright, thanks for watching.